Well, we're delighted that we're announcing a trial for 5G. Um, we're launching at the O2 Arena, you know, the iconic venue. Uh, why not? It has our name on it. Um, and we're super excited about the opportunity that 5G presents. So for our customers that come in the lounge, we'll have a 5G-like experience so they can really get to experience the, the look, the feel, and the benefits that will come through for 5G. But it's not just about 5G. We've been investing an awful lot of money over the last couple of years. Um, we were the only network to sign up to 98% indoor coverage, and I believe we achieved that. We're waiting for a verification from the regulator. Uh, and our customers, they're feeling the difference. Um, that's not to say that there's more to do, because of course there is. Yeah. But we were pleased. They voted us the best network coverage provider uh, last year. So uh, that's encouraging work, but we need to do more. When, I mean, we haven't even had the 5G spectrum auction yet. I mean, is it realistic to start talking about when that's going to be, April, May time? You're right, we haven't had the auction. Uh, it's been somewhat delayed. Uh, there were a number of organisations litigating. The courts have um, dismissed those claims, and I'm pleased to say that we can now have that auction and press ahead. So there are additional airwaves that the UK can use and consumers can benefit from. So I'm hopeful that we only now have to wait a matter of weeks for the regulator to announce the approved bidders and this auction can get started. Uh, famously, of course, the industry lost a packet on uh, 3G. I mean, paid the government £22.5 billion. Pounds. Gordon Brown was Chancellor at the time. Uh, there's no danger of that happening again, that, that sort of sum of money being blown on the 5G auctions, are there? I, I, would, I would doubt that, Ian, but uh, it's going to be a very competitive auction. Um, you know, customers have an insatiable appetite for mobile connectivity. Our network has experienced an uplift in demand of 60% just last year. So I'm sure every operator will be wanting to attend that auction and can compete fiercely for the additional airwaves that will enable them to grow and then evolve into 5G. Now, BT has been getting a fearful kicking from everyone for not investing enough in fibre to the premises. Is 5G going to obviate the need for that fibre investment? No, actually, even in today's network, 90% you know, of our sites are connected by fibre. And the UK does need fibre. Um, today, we have penetration to properties of just about 3%. So I'm pleased that BT have recently announced they're going to extend fibre. They announced 3 million homes by 2020. Um, we're working as an industry to see if we can increase that number. We need to increase that number. So fibre penetration is needed not just for the fixed line business, but also for, for mobile, if we're really going to get the full benefits that 5G has to offer. And very, very briefly, your own by Telefonica of Spain, are they still committed to the UK? Oh, they're very much committed to the UK. You know, I mentioned in the last couple of years they've invested historic amounts. Um, we have the auction upon us and, and we'll want to get exactly what our customers need to strengthen experience.